um, or overview of what we're doing tonight. This is the itinerary, so I'm going to give you a couple seconds to glance over that. We're going to go over um, what is in what is happening in the Office of Innovation, as well as the VISD commitments to you all as educators and teachers, awesome teachers that you are. We're also going to hear from our innovators, uh, our principal, our innovators at their campus, and all the wonderful ideas that they are bringing into fruition for the 2021-2022 academic year then you'll have the opportunity to have a short brain break because you will be receiving lots of information. And to close up our session this evening, you will have the opportunity to chat one-on-one -on -one with that principal and hear more about the exciting things that are happening at their campus. And finally, you'll just have a short closing task and hear about the application process. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes just to, to hear and see, uh, or to maybe, <laughs> Um, you know what to expect. All right, just to keep some norms, if you could please uh, keep your mic on mute. You can find at the bottom screen, um, there are very similar to what we use with our students, right, with our teams. Um, this is Zoom and so that the, the task bar looks a slightly different. So you can see on your screen and you can find uh, you can mute yourself and you can go ahead and turn on your, your cameras. We'll love to see you, but we do understand that sometimes that does give us short delay. And at any point, at any time, if you would like to, um, you know, convey your questions, please feel free to do that in the chat. Um, one of us will respond to you and then as well as, you know, the principals be able to see your, your inquiries in the, in the, in the chat. All right, so why are we here? Why, why are we having teacher choice? So as a result of our thought exchange that we've had throughout VISD and the realignment of our strategic plan, we found that our parents, our students, and of course you, um, our talented teachers, want choice and you want to be provided with different opportunities to be able to teach and connect with your students. The students wanted different ways to develop their genius. Teachers wanted more innovative and more agency in what they wanted to do, how they want to inspire and empower learning. So these are just some small glimpse of what came out of our thought exchange and what has now become our vision, our motto in VISD is just redesigning our future. What does that look like for all stakeholders involved? Of course, the results of this one big, huge focus was the culture of choice and voice and having that across everyone, as I mentioned earlier, our students, our teachers. But what did that mean? That meant having flexibility in the learning environments that we give, not only to you as our teachers, but our students, providing multiple experiences for all grade levels and really allowing students to launch them into their high school uh, future as well as what is going to happen after they graduate. And really having that successful launch from pre-K to second through fifth grade through eighth grade and so on into high school and really preparing them for what a successful launch would be, whether that goes for them going into the career, military, college life, whatever that means for our students. Um, we know that you are the drivers in this and the success. And so we know that you want to also have that choice. And we believe that we will become, um, that we will, can become this and develop this culture when everyone is together, right? So therefore we know that you teachers have a preferred way that you want to be able to share your talents, to share those fun lessons. As you all mentioned earlier, you love science, I remember, and um, you want to just develop those deeper connections and dive deeper into that uh, learning. So as a result of all of that hard work that has been going on in BISD, we now have two different learning pathways. We know that these are not the only ones, but these are the two pathways that we are gonna be discussing tonight. We have personalized learning and STEM pathway. So as you can see on your screen, personalized learning is going to be housed at Hopkins Elementary with their Math Innovation Zone, which we'll, you'll hear more about in a little bit, Shields Elementary, 
Patty Welder Middle School, which is also a math innovation zone campus, and our very first PTECs that uh, launched this year. And there will be two incoming PTECs coming in next year at Victoria West High School with education and, and education and training and computer science. On the other learning pathway, we have STEM pathway, which we have through our PTECH um, healthcare at Victoria East High School, which is in their first year. We have our T-STEM, which um, is in development at also at Victoria East High School, Stroman STEM Academy, and Smith STEM Academy. So what is personalized learning or what is this new approach to teaching? So briefly, I'm not going to steal the principal's thunder here, but just to give you an overview of what is personalized learning, I know as a result of, of COVID-19 and the pandemic, it's crazy that this just, you know, it's, it's going to be a year already. We became a very reactive and not just in VISD, but across the country, we became very reactive and, you know, making sure that students were, you know, one to one device, making sure that everyone had that device. And so it's important to make the distinction here that personalized learning is not distance learning. It's not a student sitting in their house at home with a computer doing an asynchronous assignment. Rather, personalized learning is the opportunity for a teacher to be in a classroom and provide different differentiation and opportunity to do large groups, small group, peer learning, one-on-one, -on -one, high dosage tutoring, really being able to take the data apart and being able to be more strategic and personal in the instruction. As a result, you have an opportunity to have more SEL components in your lesson. You have the opportunity to have more rich uh, rapport with your students. And ultimately, students have an opportunity to pick the time, the place, the path, and the pace at which they want to learn. So it provides an opportunity for students to really get the best of both worlds, having that face-to-face -face interaction, but also having the opportunity to have technology enhanced learning all in the same classroom. I'm gonna now pass it on to um, Ann Avila, our STEM innovation specialist. Thank you so much, Araceli. Um, STEM education um, is that hands-on approach. What you see on the screen is TEA's, TEA's definition of STEM education. We wanted to to really bring to light the idea that STEM education is an instructional model. It's not a class that you attend or a lab that we send our students to, but really an opportunity for an interdisciplinary approach so that our, teacher, our teachers and our students use engineering design-based thinking infused in all content areas. So taking that under, under consideration, we wanted to make sure that this education opportunity was relevant. That's one of the big things behind STEM education is that we actually communicate to our students the relevance in their learning, taking the time to know why is it important for them to spend time and effort in going forth in this pathway. And so we looked at our regional data. And as you can see on the screen, we show growth 17.6% in the next five years. And so in this STEM pathway, one of our opportunities is to really foster those employability skills in our students, starting from the very young. As Adeseli introduced earlier, this is a pre-K through 12 pathway. So we're going to start embedding these opportunities for our students to learn those employability skills at the very youngest of age, where we create and we dream and have them imagine what are the possibilities and becoming true problem solvers in the, in the upcoming years. And then lastly, we wanted to make sure that our STEM education pathway, it is new and so both Smith STEM Academy and Stroman STEM Academy are brand new campuses. They will be housed on their current elementary, STEM, Smith Elementary and Stroman Middle School, but each campus is a brand new. They're starting with a cohort of sixth grade students and then will grow over the next three years until they encompass the entire campus. We, went, we met with our design leaders and you'll meet them a little later on tonight but we really wanted them to embed components of TEA's STEM educational model. Um, if you look in the center of this continuum, you'll see some words in blue, and you may know them as 21st century skills or employability skills. 
TEA calls them STEM fluency skills, but we wanna make sure that these skills are embedded in the culture of our campus and our students and our teachers as we interact with one another. And at the foundation of this diagram that you see, you'll see that engineering design process. And, and we wanna make sure that we're utilizing this thinking, this idea that when we work, it doesn't need to follow a logic linear process. Really the work and creativity that we're gonna engage our students is iterative. And so the lessons that we ask our teachers to provide are going to provide an opportunity of mutual respect and empowerment in the classrooms where things aren't gonna go from A to Z in one way, but an opportunity for them to build, rebuild, and then improve in each cycle. I look forward to telling you a little bit more about what we have to come at Stroman and Smith Elementary. Thank you, Anne. I'm going to go ahead and share with you that BISD has very strong commitments to making sure that your voice is heard as you select your preferred pathway. So tonight you'll be listening to personalized learning pathways as well as STEM. And so we want you to really expand your thinking, expand your opportunity to dream and really know that BISD is committed to having that opportunity for you to grow and learn as an educator. We will be providing professional development and sequence in order for you to really dive deep into the experience of both personalized learning and STEM and really help you develop your genius and develop your passion and truly be able to pursue that in the classroom. So on your screen right now, you'll, you'll see the different um, campuses that you'll hear from today. I do want to point out that one of our innovative campuses, O'Connor um, ACE, is already in its first year. And so they are not with us tonight, but they are also part of our innovation pathways. Um, tonight, you'll be listening to the campuses that you currently see on your screen. And um, we'll go ahead and introduce CLI. Hi, good evening, everyone. Evening, after. Afternoon. I'm not sure where we are at this point in the day. Um, thank you for having me join today. My name is Katie McConnell, and I'm one of the associate directors at CLI. Um, I've been working with all many of our statewide programs over the course of the last year, and this has been one of the big exciting projects that it's kind of hard to believe that it's finally come to fruition and we're at this point, but we're thrilled to be here. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Children's Learning Institute has been the designated center for early childhood development in the state of Texas since 2003. So we have a long history of leading the state in early education, um, both through research and research to practice um, programs. Our mission for campus at FW Gross is to, oops, can you go back one? I'm sorry. Absolutely. Just to read, sorry, thanks. Um, is to positively impact the learning experiences and environments of the most academically at-risk children and ensure that all children are prepared with the social, emotional, and academic skills needed to be successful in school. So we know we wanna provide this rich early education experience that really sets that trajectory for the rest of their academics. Um, our program really, what sets our program apart or Sally, if you wanna to go to the next one, thank you, are kind of three distinct buckets, if you will. Um, our comprehensive instructional approaches, um, many of the programs that we will be implementing on our campus um, are long labors of love of the Children's Learning Institute. They are programs that through literally decades of research that our teams have built. Um, as far as the pre-K curriculum goes in particular, we're thrilled. We've just recently received um, approval from the state as one of the designated pre-K curriculums. So we are so excited to be able to launch that with both our three pre-K three and pre-K four students. Um, well, also another key part of um, our comprehensive instruction is the data-driven individualized instruction. Um, we, many of you may be familiar with our circle progress monitoring assessments and other assessments that we offer online. And we will really use that progress monitoring to make sure that our students are getting that responsive, immediate, direct instruction. Um, one of our other buckets is our evidence-based professional development. Um, again, this is something that 
through years and countless research study, we developed a number of programs to help support teachers as well as the instructional coaches and the leaders on the campus to be sure that we are continually growing, continually improving in our practices. So we'll be offering professional development that's not only specific to the content, but also general coaching strategies. So um, our reflective practices um, and coach one-on-one -on -one coaching, as well as many peer facilitated opportunities as well. And then the last bucket is really um, the development and establishment of the positive school climate. Much of that is going to come from our comprehensive family engagement plans and programs. Again, um, many of you hopefully are familiar with some of the work that we do through the Texas School Ready Program and many, many child care centers in and around, well, or throughout the state, but in particular in Victoria. We've been in Victoria for about 10 years um, and really working to implement the programs on the campus that some of our parents have already um, been exposed to in our, um, through our Texas School Ready Program and child care centers. Um, if you want to go ahead to the next slide. Thank you so much. Sure. I'd like to go ahead and welcome Hopkins Elementary. You're muted, Leandra. I've been doing all that talking and I just went on and on. Wow. Anyway, I'll start over. Good evening, everyone. This is Leandra. I'm the principal at Hopkins Elementary, and I am so glad to see you guys here tonight. Here at Hopkins, we will be starting our math innovation zone, uh, which I, the way I look at it is we are baby sisters to Shields and Petty Welder, because while they will be enveloping the entire personalized learning pathway, we will specifically um, be directed in math. So we will dive deep into math and we will use Imagine um, Math and the Imagine resources as our engine and our tool that's going to help us um, enter into the math zone. Uh, we will start off with our grades kinder and three uh, for our first year. And then for the next two years, we will add two grade levels. And one year we will throw pre-K in there and get that also rolling with math innovation and pre-K. Um, what we look to do in the math innovation zone is we are going to use Imagine Learning where we will have the teacher look at their data weekly. Uh, and then from there, we will then go in and make the needed changes. Imagine has a ton of capabilities and we are just not utilizing everything that Imagine has and that can offer our teachers in order to help our kids. We hope that we will be a one-to-one -one, um, technology to student ratio next year. I'm almost positive we are gonna make that happen. So we will have all of the needed tools to perfectly implement the math innovation zone for Hopkins. Our math innovation zone is going to, of course, flow right into the pattern for the district and the, and the school, as well as, like I say, we are baby sisters to Shields and Patty Welder. Our students do feed into Patty Welder, so we think that this is going to be a really good program um, in order to help build stronger learners and better opportunities for our students here at Hopkins. And what are we looking for in a math innovation zone teacher? Uh, we are looking for a relationship builder because we know relationships are the key to all learning. Uh, we want you to be an innovator in fostering your student growth. Uh, of course, we are going to have some basics and some things that are going to have to be um, what we would call non-negotiables, but you will be the teacher of your classroom and we want you to be analytical 
data-driven problem solvers. So once we see a student is having a hard time with their math facts, how can we help this student improve? And not just by using what's going to be available to us in the technology, but also what's going to be available for us in class. Because as part of the math innovation zone, it's important to remember that it's not all technology. It is part technology and it is also part teacher based. We want you to be a pioneer in your thinking. Thus, our math innovation zone. And of course, a technology visionary, because we know the kids know a whole lot better than we do, especially in technology. And I look forward to seeing you in the breakout groups and hopefully discuss math innovation at Hopkins further. Thank you. Now I'm talking <laughs> and I was unmuted. Natalie Avermite, principal at um, Patty Walter, cannot be with us tonight. She had a previous engagement, but we did want to host this nice night for you all. So I'll be presenting in her place. Um, Patty Walter Middle School is home of the Panthers, and they are one of our schools that is through the School Action Fund. So part of Natalie's vision is um, she does have experience in the um, high school arena. And one thing that is very important to her is that students have the opportunity to walk across the stage on a Friday or Saturday night and have an action plan for Monday morning at seven o'clock or six o'clock, whenever they're going to wake up that morning, whether it's to have some type of certificate, some type of, you know, a flight to, to possibly, you know, career uh, military camp, or to have an action plan that they are going to be joining a community college or going off to college at a four-year university that is very dear to her heart. So one of the things that um, the lenses that she sees this through is through a funnel. So a big motivation at Patty Walder is this funnel. So if you take the top of the funnel and it's open and you have all of these opportunities and you know you can her students can participate and you know a lot of extracurricular activities and and you know hang out with friends or choose to play video games and be on their cell phone and have all these different type of things going on in their life it could be that at the end of that four-year time in high school that opportunity or that small lens is much shorter or much smaller or narrow for your possibilities and your dreams. But if you turn that funnel upside down and you take the harder path, the less, the less path, you know, less traveled, then whenever you get to that end opportunity of your four-year degree or even in middle school, three years, then your opportunities are more greater for our eighth grade students at um, Patty Walter Middle School as they transition into high school. So this is very true, uh, true and dear, and it is definitely in the blueprint of Patty Walder. So Patty Walder is a school that received a school action fund grant, which means that they will be redesigning the whole campus um, that you know will address not only the needs previous, but also um, as a result of COVID. And so they are um, one of 24 schools that received this fund. And they have the potential to um, add up to uh, $500,000 in order to continue some of that uh, visionary work. So what must be included in this redesign of the whole school? There are five very key elements that are important to this redesign. The effective schools framework, blended learning or personalized learning, high dosage tutoring, an extended day or extended year, and social emotional learning, which we know is very important in our child's um, and our students' uh, development. So part of that effective uh, schools frameworks mean that we have effective, well-supported teachers, high curriculum, a positive school culture. There's effective instruction as uh, Ms. Hill already kind of just spoke about, you know, as they're going to be supporting Patty Welder and Shields, making sure that that part of that effective instruction is looking at data, being able to, uh, you know, break apart groups and being able to really provide a whole group to small group and just having a strong uh, leadership and planning team. So that is what we call our effective schools framework. 
The process of this was that the district applied for this grant, which was awarded last fall, and they have been working tirelessly um, creating social uh, um, study social trends, conducting interviews with former alumni and teachers, and just creating a, a draft. And so what came of this is that we know that in the 1900s, school looked pretty much something like this. We know that um, in the 1950s, it was still very similar. We have rows and desks, and there's typically a teacher at the center of the room. In the 2000s, that you know, pretty much didn't change much other than the introduction of technology. And then you know, we had last year, COVID-20 uh, during uh, the year 2020, it really changed the world of education and where we are today. It definitely has pushed us to think outside of the box and imagining new things. That is good. However, COVID-19 will have very long-term effects on our students, meaning that the gaps, the academic gaps have are only bigger now. And so this is where personalized learning, that high dosage tutoring and extended opportunities during the day or the year could really benefit our students. Because we know that we have students this year who will be in our classrooms next year that have had maybe one day of math opposed to a student who maybe had a whole years of math. So we need to make sure that we are intentional about how we increase the needs to focus um, on that social emotional wealth, as well as we know that some of our students have not even been on our campus this year. So part of that, part of the redesign focuses on the student academically, but also the student as a whole person. We know that society is changing and that our students are more exposed to loneliness, anxiety, depression, the amount of just misinformation that is available at their fingertips and just all the different types of careers that are ever changing with different type of 21st century skills needed for our students. So that is also rooted in the redesign of Patty Welder's team. Um, part of that redesign were the school uh, staff parents, community, former alumni, and some district leaders. And so some things that emerged from this trend or these, this research was that students at Patty Welder love Patty Welder. They know that the teachers really care about them. They are supportive. It's a great community. They, um, they really like it there. And um, but there are some opportunities for growth. We know that the pace of work or what is taught needs to be a little bit more personalized. Uh, we don't currently have equal expectations, maybe perhaps to other middle schools. And we would like to develop more responsibility, motivation, and agency in our students. So that kind of helped guide the conversation into some powerful conversations and trends. And as a result of that, um, became some graduate AMs. And so I kind of skipped over those so that you could see this slide because it's a little bit more powerful. But Patty Welder graduates at Patty Welder next year are going to have a deep interpersonal skills. They're going to have a deep self of direction, love of learning, and ultimately foundational knowledge and skills. And so we, um, I wanted you, I want you guys to meet uh, Genesis and Amelia. These are students currently at Patty Welder, and they're known for their sports, their ability, their their leaders on their campus. And these students were a part of that redesign process. And so a little bit about now how Patty Welder is going to look different from the other middle schools is that it will have a morning and afternoon advisory embedded in their. Uh, current schedule to be able to, again, target those five elements that I spoke about earlier, social and emotional learning, high dosage tutoring, um, being able to do personalized learning and focus on the student. So we know that we want to have staffing one to 20 students and really focused on goal, goal setting and again that SEL and relationship building. This is an example of what that morning and morning and afternoon advisor, as you can see, it'll be in the morning where they have the opportunity to have circle time, be able to talk about character ed lessons, really be able to, you know, start the day off on a positive note and be able to um, reflect and they will also be able to have one on one check ins with teachers. Just being able to celebrate, talk about fun activities that perhaps motivates them. 
And so this is all going to be part of, again, of that social emotional learning of just creating mindfulness, gratitude, uh, being able to share, you know, how we're doing, be able to, to develop that social emotional learning and peer checking with each other. And that afternoon advisory, um, students like Genesis and Amelia will have the opportunity to reflect on their day and prepare for their homework, be able to have a time to maybe they could study for an upcoming test the next day, reflect on, you know, who is someone positive that um, helped them during the day. And so we have that morning and afternoon advisory at the beginning and end of the day. We know that they can receive additional support systems during this time where they can, um, again, kind of align it back to social emotional learning and character ed education. So again, that kind of goes back to, it's all tied to those graduate aims that I showed you, that it's going to increase personal skills and a self-direction and just a love of learning. So the blended learning model with a modified block schedule is what's going to really differentiate Petty Welder from the other middle schools. We are going to have um, technology, which is going to be pivotal in this um, design, that it's going to be a one-to-one -one campus rich in math curriculum. And so this is probably uh, one of the most important slides because it does show how Patty Walder is going to provide that high dosage tutoring, the opportunity to connect with students and have those one-on-one -on -one check-ins for the opportunity for the teacher to front load information uh, at the beginning of the week and then be able to move on, on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays and have a little bit more of time, 100 minutes to work with students on subjects like math, science, ELAR and their electives, as well as social studies. And again, if you have any questions at all during the presentation, please feel free to utilize the chat feature. So again, this really provides the opportunity for students to dive deeper into their learning and to have more authentic connection and hand, hands-on learning experiences that will really give them the opportunity to, again, if you think about that funnel, whenever they begin their high school career, they're gonna have more opportunities to be able to, to uh, participate in, in different extracurricular activities, career technology and education, dual credit, and um, AP classes in high school. So blended learning is really going to provide that opportunity for teachers to have one-on-one -on -one with students, perhaps even um, pursue passions such as reading, have a, a, a block schedule where they can maybe meet with clubs and really have that big, deeper uh, opportunity to have deeper learning. So again, these uh, this modified schedule ties back to a direction of self of self-direction, the love for learning, and again, those academic skills. Finally, high dosage tutoring and extended learning will be seen also through the redesign at Patty Walder. They will have the opportunity to have some extensions during the day to be able to do this during the summer um, by providing some Saturday, uh, Saturday opportunities for them to focus on math, reading, and an exploration activity. Perhaps they wanna learn different activities that are not usually on our schedules. And of course, as I mentioned during the summer, having those summer sessions too, where they can extend their learning. And again, all of these opportunities provide us the, the chance to increase their interpersonal skills, their love of learning, and again, focusing on those fundamental skills and knowledge. So the rollout plan at Patty Walder is to begin in sixth grade this next upcoming year and to implement a slow growth process by slowly adding seventh grade the following year and then fully being a fully blended campus by year 2023-24. And so again, it's really making sure that students like Emilio and Genesis have the opportunity to walk across the stage and be able to have an action plan ready for that next Monday after they graduate. Teachers at professional, excuse me, teachers of personalized learning at Petty Walder are really committed to connection in their community. They know that they're going to be helping students develop that self-direction and goal oriented. They're going to be able, they're going to be committed to having at grade level work and above so that these students do have the opportunity to seek those opportunities in 
high school. They're going to be ready to implement new strategies and really be a tutor and provide enrichment opportunities for our, our Patty Walter Panthers. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Ms. Gabrish with Shields Elementary. Hi everyone, sorry, the phones are <laughs> ringing off the hook here and I can't get up to go stop them. But hi, I'm Kelly Gabbers. I am the principal at Shields Elementary and um, I'm just excited to share what we've been working on right now with our blended learning slash personalized learning pathways. Um, really, it started off with, we are going to be a blended learning campus, but really with the connotation that blended learning, everybody thought we were going to be like continuing the remote instruction where the kids were going to be doing uh, their learning at home. And so we really, there's so much more we're doing with the personalized learning. And so we changed the name. And so I'm really excited to share with you what we're going to be doing. And so just kind of where we've been um, in the past uh, few years, really Shields academic, um, academically has been kind of stagnant. We haven't shown, mo you know, a lot of growth. And so that is going to change. That's what our, our goal is, is in the next year or two is to be an A or a B campus. And so we think by putting these things in place, we are going to be able to meet those needs. And so here is our process of what we've been doing this year. We have a design team that is made up of leadership here on our campus. We have um, people from the district office on our team. We have community members, parents, teachers. Um, we have not done the students yet, but we are incorporating them. We are starting, um, and you'll see on the next slide, um, our journey kind of what we've been doing. So we started off, we had to gather our team, kind of design the journey because school is going to look completely different. And so I'll get into that um, in just a little bit, but we also listened to what was the need for uh, Shields. And so we conducted interviews and looked at trends. We have drafted um, a vision and we are now in the plan pilot um, stages. And so actually today was our first pilot for the STEM block. And so it's just the exciting thing is we are totally redesigning what school will look like. And so to have a part of that, it's super exciting on my end just to see how far we have already come in this short amount of time. And I can't wait to start um, next year. And so why schools must change. Um, and you're gonna see, <laughs> we're gonna skip over this little part because it's the same that Natalie had, but as you saw in the previous slides, we know that um, when you look at it, schools typically are sitting in rows, um, the teachers at the front of the room. Uh, it's kind of like a one size fits all type of instruction. And so just like this factory model here, it's like what goes in, everybody goes in one way and everybody's coming out the same way. And we might have a few, you know, people going down some additional pathways, but next year it's really going to be personalized and so we want to be able to take wherever a student is if they are a higher achiever or if they're in need of um, some extra help we want to know where the child is and be able to push them no matter what instead of really a lot of times you teach as a teacher you're teaching to the middle of the group um, this really is personalized and so we look forward to, to seeing that so as I said earlier, we listened to our parents and our teachers and we even asked our students, we did um, interviews with them, like what, what do we need here for Shields? And SEL is a huge part. And so you'll see in just a little bit that that social emotional connection, we are going to do a lesson every day. Um, we are going to start off with a community circle. Um, so you'll see that. So we're listening. They really wanted to connect with real life examples. And so I can't wait to share with you about our passions block that we are going to do. Um, individualized small group. Absolutely. Because we are no longer our goal is to not do whole group instruction. We really are structuring our day um, as STEM and ELER. And so we really are going to be having small group instruction is going to be the way that we think is really going to move our students. So we're totally getting away from that whole group instruction. So um, that's, a, that's a change. Um, and so here is something that one of our team members said. Uh, so I'll tell you if you'll just click on that little link. 
maybe. Or maybe not, maybe I can just read it. <laughs> Basically the gist is, you know, if you keep doing the same thing, then you're gonna keep getting the same results. And so therefore uh, change needs to happen. And so, all right, you can go to the next slide. And the next one will just, <laughs> Okay, so I want you as we uh, spend the next few minutes just to imagine the possibilities. So when we were at our first planning meeting and we talked about like, what is it we really want for Shields? These are the big words that came out. We wanted the growth mindset. We wanted the students reading. Um, and you can just kind of see grit, collaboration, um, the different things. And so we took those words and came up with our graduate aims. And so just like how in the Patty Welder design, these are the four things that we want our students at Shields to use on a daily basis, as well as when they leave us, we want them to continue on. And so we really think with um, the intellectual prowess and the curiosity and empathy and growth mindset that we are going to have a well-rounded student. We're not just going to actually be focusing in on the reading and the math, but on the day-to-day -day person of what they need and helping them grow. And so we wanted to prioritize. So like I said, it's not where we are looking at the whole child. We're not just looking at the academic side of math and reading. Um, but we want to be able to have the rigorous learning affirmations of self and others and customization. That's really where that personalized learning is going to come into play. Um, I'm going to share with you, let's see the next thing, a day in the life. Um, before we show the little video, here is a sample schedule. Next year, we are rolling out second through fifth grade will be a the personalized learning um, grade levels. We are going to start implementing some personalized learning in kinder and first grade, but that will fully come into effect the following year. And so what you're going to see is we have every day, everyone starting out with the morning meeting. And so our school is going to start 15 minutes prior to the other elementary schools. And so that doesn't mean that the teacher work hours are any different, but we are going to start our day at 745 and we're going to hit the ground running. And so we know that that community circle, that family time inside the classroom is so important. And so we're really going to be hitting our SEL curriculum right there. Um, with that family fill. And so we think that's going to make a huge difference. And then we're going to have STEM, which will be science and math together. And then we'll have an ELAR block. Those blocks, which I'm super excited about, are two hours and 15 minute chunks of time of uninterrupted time. So this is guaranteed for second through fifth grade. So um, what we're going to be doing in there is if you were a STEM teacher, then you there's going to be four rotations that you're going to have. Same thing with ELAR. You'll have four rotations in your classroom where you're going to have a small group with the teacher. You're going to have a collaboration station where students will work together on whatever task they're assigned. You'll have an SDL, so a self-directed learning station where the student is working independently. And then you'll have a technology station where the students are going to be utilizing Imagine Math um, that way. The exciting part too is for every grade level here at Shields next year, we will have a paraprofessional that will be assigned to each grade level. And so it will actually be having an extra hand um, helping out and what teacher wouldn't love that. So <laughs> that's exciting. Also something else that you'll see that is different is on Fridays, we're gonna have a passions block and we have so many um, talents amongst us as far as the teachers, the community members that are here. And we really want to give our students exposure to things that they might not typically be able to do. And so we want to offer um, maybe like a cooking class where students are gonna lear learn how to cook, or maybe we're going to get with Victoria Ballet, which they've already um, heard about us. And they're like, hey, we wanna join in too. But so many of our students don't get to attend dance or 
different things like that. And so we want to just be able to provide opportunities for students to explore their passions. And so they might explore a passion for six weeks and then the next six weeks we're gonna change. Um, and so they will be ongoing, um, but you know, it's just a way to expose students to other things. And then our Genius Lab really is about being intentional with um, interventions and meeting students, you know, maybe one-on-one -on -one with the teacher and how we can close those gaps. Do we have time for this or no? You're muted. I did already share it with everyone in the chat. So I okay. definitely, um, we can go ahead and show it real quick. Let's see. If not, if we don't have time, that's fine. Okay, but it is on the chat and I definitely recommend um, watching this video because it really gives you a whole vision of what Kelly was rep like speaking on in the schedule here. And so here is our rollout plan that next year we will do second through fifth grade. And then the following year will be uh, fully implementing in kinder and first. And we will be, I have some other little notes that I was writing down. We will be one-to-one -one devices. Um, and just really thinking outside of the box is really what we are going to, to be doing in taking a student and pushing them forward no matter what level they're starting with. That's it. Thank you, Ms. Galbraith. Now I'd like to turn it over to Tiffany Amsher with Smith STEM Academy. Tiffany, maybe we lost connectivity or something. I don't see her in the little um, okay. thing. And would you like to go ahead and continue with um, STEM or would you like for me to go ahead and? I was um, texting Tiffany right now. Just give me like, you can give me one minute. Absolutely. At this time, if you do have any questions about anything that you've heard so far, please, I encourage you to go ahead and use the chat and write those questions in there so the campus principals can definitely reach um, reach out to you one on one and you can actually message on at, uh, zoom to someone individually. So if you have a specific question already on your mind that you'd like to ask and would like to go ahead and take the opportunity now that would be awesome too. Adeseli, if you will help us, if you will skip forward to Stroman, I'm going to go ahead and speak on that and then Tiffany's okay. are rejoining us at this time. So we'll come to her and definitely she is um, working on some technical difficulties. Not a problem. Thank you, Ann. No problem. Okay, so I am totally excited to talk to you about Stroman STEM Academy. Um, this is going to be the middle school portion of that STEM pathway I talked to you about earlier. A big focus for us, especially in middle school, is this whole child approach. And so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about each component within this idea ideology around this whole child. Um, so if you'll go ahead and advance for me, Adeseli. So like many of our innovation campuses, we too have some graduate aims that we're, we have put in place for our students. Uh, one thing you need to know about um, Stroman STEM Academy is that we really feel it's a, 
empowered to equip our students with the tools necessary to continue their education in the STEM field and career pathways. Similar to what Adeseli said, we want them to have that action plan when they get ready to graduate in after high school and they receive that diploma. Our mission um, will be to fulfill this through STEM teaching, um, learning, high expectation, and a supportive environment. Being a STEM student really is going to set you up for success and one being effective and clear communicators. Part of the STEM pathway as we'll, I'll talk about soon is project-based learning. And so in that our, our students are given the opportunity to present information similar to they would do in a job setting or employability setting, being able to present information to uh, their colleagues and to others outside of the campus is going to be an essential tool. We want them to be compassionate citizens. And so we'll work on our SEL and you'll see we have time built in our schedule to provide those students with the opportunities to focus and, and hone those skills to become compassionate citizens. Being critical thinkers, specifically to STEM, utilizing the engineering design thinking process will definitely set up our students for success. Part of that is also being a collaborative member where their students are able to effectively collaborate and use a team approach to extending their learning as well as designing mm -hmm. um, solutions for future problems. We also want data-driven problem solvers, not only for our students, but for our teachers. We wanna really hone your skill as teachers in looking at data to effectively meet the needs of our students and then transferring that ownership to our students who then will have an opportunity to earn, own their own learning and success. And then of course, perseverance. If we're going to ask our students to be iterative in their thinking, to know that the solution's not gonna come very quickly and that we're gonna need to go back and try again, then perseverance is gonna be definitely a graduate aim for our students. Please excel. Thank you. And so looking at that whole, whole child approach, you'll see that there are key components, both STEM, project-based learning opportunities for our students, that data-driven instruction, SIT, which is scholar investment time, clear structured teaching, a supportive environment, and meaningful family ownership. And so this is the basis of what we're wanting to design in looking at our school model. Please, yeah. So the basis of our instructional approach are two prong. So the first is project-based opportunities. We know that a project-based instruction, that's the teacher side of project-based learning, is to facilitate opportunities for our students to inquire, to use their voice to collaborate, collaborate and then also gain feedback, revise their their thinking, and then re use reflection as a key component of their daily interactions with both the teachers and their peers. And so that's a key component in when we look at our instructional guides and going forward. The second key component of STEM education is the engineering design process. We think of this as a thinking process that will be embedded in all our core curriculum. So as a teacher, you'll have professional development in those two key areas. One for professional uh, development around project-based instruction to facilitate those learning experiences. The other in the engineering design process where we actually think about the thought process in which our students are engaging on a daily basis in multiple activities. So we wanna provide them that structure of asking, imagining, sharing their what they imagine and their possible solutions with their team then collaborating to plan as they create that design, and then thinking about not only testing, but how do we improve? And that's where that iterative piece comes in, and then sharing. Knowing that the process is iterative means that it isn't linear. There are gonna be multiple opportunities where the students make it to create, but they have to go back and reimagine. Or they may get to the test and improve stage, and then a new question emerges that pulls them back to ask before they even get an opportunity to share. So knowing that as an educator is very important because this is really going to ask you to be flexible and really reimagine what instruction looks like in your classroom. 
So of course, data-driven instruction is so important. As many of our innovation campuses talked about, how is it that we can best personalize the learning for our students? Um, Adesili shared about the approaches where that one size fits all is no longer relevant, especially in these times. And so you will receive professional development around utilizing data-driven instruction and how then to empower your students to use that for their own personal goal setting within the context of the classroom and in the school that leads to extend outside of those school walls. Thinking about that scholar investment time, when we get ready to see the schedule, you're going to see that three days out of the week are set aside for scholar investment time. This is the time for us to both intervene as well as enrich opportunities for our students. Those, during this time, we will also provide specific direct intervention that is strategic and systematic across the system. So given the opportunity are some of our non-core teachers will also be leading some of our STEM experiences for our students to enrich the time utilized with our students. And now like you can see me. <laughs> the second is this idea of clear structured teaching. So we know that in order for us to prepare um, our lessons, we have to think about the end in mind, right? So a lot of us as educators have been taught this idea of backward design and really looking at a gradual release process of for instruction. A key component to actual the STEM educational process is really internalizing your lessons. And so what you will be given the opportunity to learn is how do we embed these graduate aims? How do we achieve those within our daily lessons? So not only are we providing experiences around project-based learning opportunities, we're teaching our students to think critically and utilizing that engineering design thinking, but as educators, we're embedding those graduate, graduate aims in our daily instruction to reinforce our goal of achievement. So we really want them to be, when they leave us to have those graduate aims in their grasp, well then we as educators must intentionally embed that in our lesson design. So we'll have some more structured opportunities to kind of help guide you. So this is a really a great opportunity for you as an educator to hone your craft around both planning and internalizing for delivery of instruction to meet the needs of students. A key component at the center of our whole child approach is restorative practices and really understanding those interactions of building mutual respect, not only with student to student, but student to teacher and then teacher to families. We really want an opportunity for us to support, similar to our personalized learning pathway, we know that our social emotional opportunities and support are needed, especially in these times of COVID. So know that restorative practices is a key component. When you see our, our daily schedule, two times out of the week are set for selling to our aunt. And in that component, we'll be working with restorative practice opportunities with our students to one, set the start of the day, setting that goal for the week, and then ending that week to see how far we've accomplished and what structures do we need to think about over the weekend as we begin the new journey the next week. So really taking time out of our schedule to not only focus on instruction, but on the well-being and mindfulness of both our students and our teachers and giving them the tools needed to be successful. And then I think mostly that foundation around family ownership. You know, um, history has taught us that a research that in middle school, a lot of that family component kind of falls away. This is a middle ground for our students that are going through adolescence. And so we know that at this time, as they are finding themselves, they're finding their own identity is a great opportunity to maintain that contact with our family members and really hone on that ownership opportunities. And so as a campus and as teachers, we have that um, responsive collectiveness of ownership that it's not only on our students or on the school to maintain um, the successfulness and individuality of our students, but also of the family. And so we share this opportunity of growing our students to meet those graduate aims that we have set for. And so here's our schedule. Um, 
So you'll see that we have um, seven, four, we have our four core subjects, but we are offering opportunities for our students to have two electives. One key idea behind this schedule is that we want student choice. Uh, it's, the district has done strategic development around providing choice opportunities, not only for our families, but also for our students and now for you as our educators. And so we wanted to ensure that our students, even though we're tr introducing this new educational model, still have had opportunities for choice electives within their schedule. At the end of each day, you'll see that that's where the, the intentional time is being used both for selling to my aunt where that focus is on social emotional learning and opportunities for lessons and goal setting and then three times out of the week we have that scholar investment time where we're able to provide remediation that um, high dosage tutoring as well as enrichment and additional opportunities for project-based learning we will have a double block on our tuesdays and thursdays and so during this time, we'll be provided, our teachers will be provided additional instructional time on one end to provide those project-based learning experiences, which we know um, is needed and flexibility of pace. So our pace will be a little uh, different than it is within the actual core of aligned to the district so that we can provide those opportunities for our students. But in that, on the opposite end, is additional time for planning. We know as teachers, you need that structured time to set um, and facilitate these opportunities for our students. So we want a time to build your capacity. And so with that double blocking within our modified schedule, that we are able to provide that on a weekly basis, opportunity for your growth and your planning, um, as well as our students' additional opportunities for project-based learning. Um, within the school day. So our anticipated outcomes, what we're truly trying to achieve is one, increase student learning. We want to improve school culture and we want support, we want to be able to support teaching and learning for our educators. Your growth and development is just as important to us as our, as our students. And so we're wanting to help our students to individually um, have that academic success. We wanna be able to address unfinished learning and we want to be able to, one, help Stroman move to a more acceptable accountable rating, which we know at the beginning is, the, is, the, is where we're beginning, but it's not the end. Our students want to have that action plan at the end of graduation. So what, uh, what does it mean to be a STEM teacher? So we're looking for those entrepreneurs entrepreneurial educators. So what does that even mean, right? So that means we're looking for people who want to collaborate, right? Who are willing to take that idea of inter interdisciplinary approach where we integrate the subjects and that is done through our project-based learning experience. We want to be open to innovative methods. So we want to be able to use technology to kind of help facilitate that. We want you to be able to let go and let students take charge of their own learning. We want you to have that growth mindset. That means we want you to be learners, right? And be open to change. You know, change is hard, we all know that, but this is a new experience at a new campus. And we want ownership. We want you to be able to take ownership, not only for your own learning, but for the learning of your students and the community that we're going to serve. We need problem solvers, right? We, we need you to be that innovative thinker that looks for problems and really wants to take an opportunity to address them in the most creative ways. One of the great aspects around STEM is that creative thinking, being able to dream up these opportunities and try them out. And guess what? You're gonna iterate, so that means you're gonna do it again. So if the first time doesn't work, that's okay. And then communication skills. Right, we want you to be able not only to communicate to one another, because as our students work in a collaborative group, you must work also in collaborative groups with other educators. And so those communication skills are gonna be key, especially in working with our families as you begin to teach them and empower them, not only for a choice um, around their students' education opportunities, but you empower them to become advocates for their own individual students. So I think that brings me to the end. So I hope that you consider 
looking at Stroman STEM Academy as a new place to come and learn and work alongside our students and our families. So we're gonna zip on back to Tiffany. I think I saw her pop in and we'll give you an opportunity to learn what does STEM look like in our most earliest grades and how they will then transition to us. So welcome Tiffany. Hi, good evening everyone. All right, I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about Smith STEM Academy. So what is STEM? And I know Ann just told you a little bit about what STEM is, but STEM is really a method, um, a thinking method, not necessarily just something we do in science class, but it's really um, a methodology of thinking um, and providing those experiences for problem solving uh, for children. At Smith STEM Academy, our mission is to prepare pre-K through fifth grade students with the necessary 21st century skills to be successful in STEM career pathways. Um, and we're going to do this by focusing on those 21st century skills, uh, critical thinking, uh, creative thinking. I'm sorry, my thing is very, for some reason it is zoomed in so huge, I cannot see anything. <laughs> Communication, collaboration, and resilience. So these will be our graduate outcomes and these are the skills um, that we are working to build our students upon. All right, so the, uh, our rollout for the next three years, we will begin with our pre-K through first grade um, next year, and then we will slowly implement um, two grade levels each year after that. Um, however, all um, students it, within STEM Smith, Acad Smith STEM Academy will be um, involved in STEM thinking and learning through block classes, um, through our STEM lab, as well as uh, modeling the engineering design process across all grade levels. So we're going to start small, we're going to get really good in pre-K through first grade, and then we're going to build on those, uh, but we will also uh, the, the students who are in second through fifth grade next year, they will kind of get a taste of what's coming for them in the following years. We will also have a, a community-based mentor program, which I'm really excited about, where we will pull in community members within the STEM field to come in and work with and mentor our students. We will also have a STEM lab or a makerspace where students will be able um, to come in and truly make their ideas and their designs come to life. So we're really excited about that. So this is a little bit about the engineering design process. Um, and the important part of this is that it's a method and a way of thinking and that it's fluid. So it's not just a, step, a check off box that you go through, uh, but you really um, take into account all of the pieces and if you need to, if you're at the create and then you realize that it's really not working out, you can always go back to the plan and imagine level. So uh, the important part of engineering design process again is that it's a thinking process, uh, much like UPC that we that we are all familiar with. Um, and it's nonlinear, meaning you can go back, uh, go back and replan if you need to. And it does require the use of 21st century skills. At Smith, we will have unique student experiences that set us apart from others. We will have uh, project-based learning and design challenges, which I am super excited about. Uh, we're working closely with PBL Works to get us training in that area. Um, and I think that is going to make a, I know it's going to make a big different, difference on our campus. Um, and really it puts the students in charge of their learning and the teachers will kind of take a step back and um, be more of in the facilitator role. We will also have a maker space as I discussed, I'm sorry, that is silly. Um, we will currently have a maker space also uh, for students to make their ideas come to life. And we will also take part in a living career pathway, uh, which really um, allows the students to work with our mentors in the community to really explore a career um, that interests them and they get to learn all about it. They get to see what that job is like and then they can get to present to the community and their peers. So we're really excited about that opportunity that we have at Smith. 
a day in the life of Smith, of a student in Smith. If you notice, we'll include um, makerspace twice a week uh, with PE three times a week. We will also be um, integrating our math, science, and STEM the best that we can. Um, and to give us a bigger chunk of time to perform those PBL and design-based challenges. We also have wind time and high dosage tutoring uh, throughout the day as well. So what we're looking for at Smith STEM Academy in teachers is someone um, who so we're, we really believe in the project-based instruction, uh, critical thinking. So it, we're going to be integrating that engineering design process. We're gonna be really focusing on those STEM fluency skills across all content areas. And to do that, we're going to be following the TEA STEM framework alignment. And we're also going to be working hard to uh, develop a positive school culture for all students, parents, and families and teachers. And so we're going to do that through safe and civil schools and through our career pathway interests, as well as using chance, teach like a champion in our fundamental five. Uh, we'll also be using the five E lesson cycle. And um, again, like I discussed before, the STEM community outreach program to really bring the community in and give our students um, a firsthand look at all of the possibilities they have for careers in the future, right in their own backyard. So what we're looking for in a best fit STEM teacher is someone who is dedicated to the change process, someone who has a growth mindset, who is interested and excited about the, the STEM instructional model, someone who can model and promote problem solving skills, and one who um, also shares those great communication skills and can teach those to our children and promote those within their classroom. All right, so thank you so much. I'm sorry I had a little technical difficulty and so I feel like I'm a little wired, but I can't wait if you have any other questions. Smith STEM Academy is going to be a great place and I'm so excited and I would love for you to join us. Thank you, Tiffany, and no worries. We're gonna go ahead and jump to um, a quick little brain break. I'm gonna give you about a minute. I know you heard so many different presentations. Um, just to tell you about what is to come, you are going to have the opportunity to hear on how to apply to these awesome opportunities that you just heard about. And then we will be able to release you into breakout rooms. And that will, um, after we break out into breakout rooms, then you can go directly to um, Anne with Stroman, or you can go speak to Ms. Gabrish, uh, Ms. Kelly with uh, Shields. You can go speak to um, whatever principal you heard today, Ms. Hill, uh, myself, if you want to uh, talk to someone about Patty Walder and CLI with Katie. So anybody that you would like to talk to, um, we'll give you a time to kind of just think about it and um, definitely reach out to that principal if you can, if you want to in the chat. But part of our something big is happening is our campaign to um, really give you all as educators the opportunity to voice how it is that you want to teach. How is it that you want to continue developing your passion and your genius? So a part of this will be um, you've heard about all of these awesome campuses and now you have the opportunity to go ahead and visit the VISDHR um, page and go ahead and seek those openings that will be posted. Um, within the next couple weeks, our innovation principals will be participating through the staff selection process. They will be engaged in that process for these innovation campuses. So it's very important that if you heard something awesome that is happening at a particular school that really speaks to you, that really speaks to your passion, then go ahead and submit that application. Go ahead and reach out to that principal so that you can begin that process. Um, it is important to note um, that May 15th will be the last day to have approvals for internal lateral moves. So that's gonna be a very important date for you as you consider um, you know, possibly moving to a campus 
that is more aligned to your passion. And so with that being said, again, um, if you do have any questions, um, please go ahead and reach out. And I would like to invite everyone right now to go ahead and take your cell phones and I have also posted it in the chat, but if you could please complete this forms for us, just so we have a, um, you know, kind of record of who attended our session this evening. Um, there's only really one important question on there. The others are just a way for us to follow up with you. If you do have any questions, um, you're more than welcome to, to send them through our forms, our Microsoft forms. So again, if it's asking you for credentials, it is going to be your VISD username and password to go ahead and submit that for us. So I'll give you about a minute and then we'll go ahead and break out into breakout rooms. Um, and did you want to add anything else about the application process? No, Araceli, would you mind bringing back up the rooms? And if you will put a number by your name, I can definitely put everyone in the room they need to go. Perfect. Again, um, we will, you can find the principal's contact information by going to that particular campus's website. Um, so here are their contact information if you want to take a quick snapshot. And then what we're going to do is we are going to show you those campus slide so that you can go ahead and select that. Is this it, Anne? Oh, I think the updated one was uh, at the top of the screen. Oh, no. At the beginning. At the very beginning? Okay, let me go ahead and... While we're doing this, I'm going to end the recording at this time.